Nana Kunedu Ajuman Rollins was born on November 17, 1948. She got married to her sweetheart, Jerry John Rollins, an Air Force officer in 1977. She gave birth to her first child, Ezanato Rollins, in 1978. Two other daughters and a son followed later, Yaa Santua, Amina and Kimathi. She became the first Lady of Ghana from 4th June 1979 to 24th September 1979 and 31st December 1981 to January 7th 2001, both times under President Jerry John Rollins. Nana Kune Duajima Rollins came into the political limelight when her husband became head of state briefly in 1971 and from then onwards 1981 to 2001. She became the president of the 31st December Women's Movement from 1982 till date. She was elected first vice chairperson of her party in 2009 during the second term of the National Democratic Congress NDC party's tenure in office under the late president of the Republic of Ghana, Professor John Evans Atamills. She challenged the sitting president of Ghana, John Evans Atamills, for the party's flag bearership position at the party's congress, which took place at Sunyane in the Bronga Hafa region in 2011 and lost to him. She has vowed to push women to the highest level in our country and also be the voice for women who are voiceless. What else do you want to know? Let's get to me. As you all saw today, my guest is Mrs. Nana Konedu Ajemine Rawlings. She is the wife of former president JJ Rawlings. Thank you so much for honoring my invitation to be a part of Sincerely V. Pleasure. So I'm we're glad to be here. Thank you. We're going to get straight into it. Looking back, we're going to go back. As a child, who or what did you ever aspire to be? That's a tough one. Um, I, it's difficult for me because uh, my parents always said you can be who you want to be. Right. And be what you want to be. Right. And so at no point was I trying to emulate somebody. Okay. However, I had people who influenced my life like my mom, okay. my dad, my grand aunt. And, and how would you mm -hmm. say, let's say your grand aunt, how mm -hmm. did she influence your life? In posture, in okay. honesty, in forthrightness. You know, she would tell you, you are named after a great queen. You can't do this, you can't right. do that, that kind of thing. Okay. But she was a very forthright person, hardworking. Okay. And so the, these were the, the uh, things I looked at when, she, when I was much younger. And then looking ahead, did you ever think first lady, you would become first lady? <laughs> no. No. <laughs> no, because nobody really plans to be a first lady right. per se, I guess, unless um, the, the person starts, your husband or whoever it is starts off as a president and you work towards going to be a first lady, right. maybe. Um, so I didn't look out to be a first lady. Okay. But I always used to tell myself, I'm going to get to the highest. Yes. And that, that's one of the highest. <laughs> I think that any woman, even to aspire to be, mm. is that point. Now, as first lady, what, what did you love about being the first? I know there's privileges, and, but what, what did you love the most about being <laughs> first lady of Ghana? Oh, Vanessa. You know, at the time when I became the first lady, Ghana was in a terrible situation. Yes, yes. It was classified as a collapsed state. Mm -hmm. um, so it, 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 there was nothing exciting to look forward to in okay. terms of privileges. Right. But as I started my work with women and I saw the changes that we were able to do, the laws I was able to get my husband to pass, and so on. Those were the things I looked forward to. Okay. And seeing the changes in the little children I would meet in the villages. Right. Um, kids would probably otherwise never have gone to school. Right. Um, and you see them go through the daycare centers, enter class one, one time or other they come and tell you, can you help us to actually put the child through secondary school? Wow. It's really a joy to watch right. that kind of development. Right. So those were the things I looked forward to. Okay. And my ability okay. to be able to fundraise, that also was something that I looked forward right. to. Right. Yeah. So um, you looked up 
as you, people see you as such a strong woman. Mm -hmm. When someone comes up to you and they say, I admire you, I want to be like you, what goes through your mind? That's a tough one too. <laughs> um, I, I, I think that if somebody comes to me and says, I want to be like you, our first, 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 first thing that I'll tell them is, you must believe in yourself. You must have a passion in you that burns with so much energy that you want to use it and let the passion actually work for you. Right. This, these are the things that I'll really push to that person and then try to guide the person if they don't already have right. an idea of what they want to do. Right. Now, um, looking back, mm. I asked you about what you loved the most mm. about being First Lady. What did you hate? And you know, how about those hours where you would stand by your husband's side, long hours, three, four hours. Was those <laughs> some of the moments you can say, you look back and you're like, wow. <laughs> how did I do that? Yes. <laughs> um, Yes, I'll say so, uh, okay. but sometimes depending on what the subject was about or what the program was about, mm -hmm. you could enjoy it. Right. Yes, you could enjoy it. But if the program was not something that you were interested in and you just had mm -hmm. to be there because he was there, then it was a bit difficult. Right. So the thing is to try and get into whatever he is doing Yes. so that you don't feel so... Um, like alienated of, right yeah from right. whatever he's doing and then you fit into it okay like you glide into it right you swim into it <laughs> so <laughs> whatever the, words you want to right use, so at the end know. of the day being yeah. that support so mm. regardless you're there for him yes right okay now a lot of women I would say fear going into politics mm. what do you love about politics what intrigues you about politics I think what intrigues me is the ability and the opportunity to change lives, okay. improve on people's lives, change situations for the better, right. not make it worse, no. Right. Always looking at the positive side of how can I make it better. Right. If it's in the area of population and the women's uh, birth control, I want to see how I can improve on it for them. Okay. If it's in the area of the woman's own education, how can I improve it for them? Right. Or the children's education, their health, you know, the environment. These right. are things that I made sure were put into the uh, program of work right. of the movement that I was running. So that, because it gave me a lot of satisfaction yes. to see those things actually pushed through right. to improve on the quality of life for right. the Ghanaian woman. And is that the 31st December? women's movement yes yes so that, that was okay was speaking was. on that because mm. a lot of people have said that since you've been out of office mm. we haven't heard much about it mm -hmm. what is the status of that movement currently at the moment the ladies from the regions mm -hmm. had you know asked me to uh, what well, they wanted a name change to begin okay. with so we debated it for some time and I agreed to their position that they wanted the name changed okay. to developing women in mobilization. Okay, developing well, women, women in mobilization. In mobilization. Okay. So we still have the DWM, but it, it's something else because now we are trying to move away from massive mobilization okay. to individual participation, individual development of the women looking for loans for the women to start up their own projects and so on. Okay. So this is the, the, the thrust of the, the organization now. Okay, mm -hmm. so it does still exist, it's, it but does. under another and name. Yes, and with a different concept. And a different concept. A different concept. Although it is still to empower the woman, it is still to push her through you know, her economic activity, right. it is still to push her into political activity. Right. In effect, it is just to lift the woman beyond where she is, wherever she is. Okay, mm -hmm. and um, speaking of women, what would you say is affecting women currently in Ghana that we need to focus on and we need to pay attention to? I think that what is affecting women the most is, um, we have self-confidence, mm -hmm. but there's something missing out of that self-confidence. Right. And I'm looking for the word. It's um, 
just just trying to get them to believe that whatever they're doing, they're doing it because they believe in it. They have a passion for it. Right. To have that passion to want to jump over hurdles. Right. We need that. Right. I think that in a way is missing. We are all expecting certain political people to help us. Yeah. We're all expecting certain political people to, you know, um, push us through something or be our boyfriends so they can support us. Right. I think we should move away from that. Because okay. every woman has an inbuilt security and strength that she can, you know, fall back on. Right. And I want us to be able to do that. Right. Fall back on your deep-seated security, okay. your strength. And it's a certain strength that um, I think is God-given. Right. Because um, I always say that you, you, when you have a child, and you put the child in another room and you're, you're in a, a bedroom with maybe your husband, sometimes you get the feeling of, you no, know, go and check. Mm -hmm. A feeling of go and see if the child is okay. Right. If you sleep over it, you might wake up and find your child dead. Mm -hmm. If you get up and let your instincts tell you what to do, you go there and see maybe the child is crying out mm -hmm. of illness right. or something. There's something not right and you can solve it. So let's tap on that deep-seated you know, feeling that we have in there as women, which we always call, um, uh, what do they Intuition? And intuition. Yes. You know, because it's there in every woman. Right. Let's dig into it and use it and let your passion drive you. Okay. Let your passion drive you. I keep saying that nobody should accept that they are ambitious or over ambitious. There's nothing like that. Okay. It's passion. Okay. Let it drive you. And I think if we let our passion drive us, to be able to overcome a lot of things. That's true. And speaking yeah. of passion, Zanato, I want to say her name exactly right. Zanato? Zanato. 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 <laughs> she, um, <laughs> how did you, did you support her on her political journey, mm. even with the fact that she was with a different mm. party? Mm. I, I, I don't even want to answer it from that angle. Okay. Because the perspective that I would like to give is the fact that I made sure that all my four children are politically savvy so that they, they can make informed choices, right. they can take decisions on their own right. and be here or there, it didn't matter, but make sure that whatever you're doing, you do it right, right. and do it well. Because I come from a family of uh, multi-political uh, disciplines. Right. Um, I have UP family members, I have CPP family members, right. and now I have loads of NDC family members who are thinking of all leaving and coming to N NDP. Oh, you know? wow. Yeah. So okay. you, we have them everywhere. And so um, I think that she was in a, a good situation and position okay. to make an informed choice. Okay. And she did. Okay. Um, it's, it's not up to me to change her mind. Right. Yeah, because I wouldn't want to change her mind. Right. Um, whatever she, whoever she thought it out with is very comfortable about that. So it's okay. The others also have their feelings about what they want to do. But like I said, I come from a family of a multi-party um, system. Right. From my father's time into my grandfather's time. So it's okay so long as the right done okay it's okay um dr buzia was a very close friend to my dad had his wedding in my my at home my parents home he introduced actually he went with my dad to go and see my mother for the first time right when my my dad was interested in my mom dr Nkrumah and my dad played hockey together in achimoto school mm -hmm. so they were also very close in that respect and later on in life he worked directly with Osajifu. So we have, and we have family members, UP, CPP, right. maybe blended. one family is blended right. together. So um, I think the most important thing is, what is your vision? Right. What do you want to do for your people? What do you want to do for the people of Ghana? What do you want to do for your country? And indeed, what do you want to do for yourself? Right. Because whatever you're doing must reflect who you are. If you are in politics, you cannot reflect the goodness that is a man or a woman this right. time, then uh, would have lost something. Right. Yeah. 
Now, you spoke of the fact that you have four children. Mm -hmm. um, would you have rather they had a low-key lifestyle, a more quiet lifestyle, than them being so much in the public eye? Um, I'm not sure whether they are that much in the public eye, though. I don't know. You have to tell <laughs> me. <laughs> um, when, when they were growing up, mm -hmm. I kept them out of public eye, mm -hmm. except when we have functions like six March and you know they want to go to the parade right it's okay let's go or June 4 they want to be there apart from that they went to normal schools here okay they have their classmates here um, then from there to some of them went to Wesley girls two of them went to Wesley girls Amina went to Achimoto school okay. so um, it's difficult to say you give keep I mean we keep them really private right. when they are in public schools. Right. You know, right. And have friends outside who may not even be in politics. But um, as much as possible, I try to get them to or steer the way for them to live normal lives. Right. Yeah. And um, I know I'm a media personality mm -hmm. and a female, mm -hmm. and I feel that sometimes I want to not be discreet, but there's certain things I want to keep to myself. Mm -hmm. And many said that you were able to, with all four children, keep your pregnancy to yourself <laughs> without it being in the public eye. Mm. How were you able to achieve that? Vanessa, people have forgotten that there was no TV around the country. <laughs> so even if, I, if my stomach were that, that big, right. They would still not see it right. because the TVs, you know, there was only GTV, which could only make a certain radius. Right. So if I went outside that radius, you wouldn't see me. Right. But I was like you, little. <laughs> but you still pregnant. Are. Yeah, I just don't put on it. <laughs> <laughs> you know. And so the pregnancy was never that big, okay. really. Just, just if it's this big, that means I'm almost ready to have the baby. Right. Right. So, but I was doing a lot of work with it, traveling outside um, uh, Accra. Okay. So those who were working with me in the regions, they saw. They saw. Okay. And those I was working with in my office, they saw. But you know, you don't go around and hey, there you right. go. You know, I'm pregnant. On no. Full display. No. Right. 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 <laughs> so um, if I didn't wear something that was really kind of tight, you wouldn't see it. Okay. If I wore something loose, you probably will not see it. Right. And by the time I'm ready to have the baby, it's, it looks like somebody who is three months pregnant. Right, because you carry small. And then, of course, yeah, I carry small. Yeah. Then I wear my high heels. I, I mean, I don't stop wearing them. Yeah, yeah but so. I feel like every woman should always <laughs> Because wear your their high poise heel. is important. Yes, yes, definitely. Mm. <laughs> okay, so you know, we're going to take a quick break. Okay. But when we get back, we're going to get into more of your fun life, what you like to do, your trend setting <laughs> lifestyle. Mm. Sincerely V will be right back.